G'day, Mr. Fitz here. Hope you're going well. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to build a lid for the box that you built in the last tutorial. So there are many similarities with this lid as the box. As you can expect, this is going to go on top. So it needs to have the same general dimensions. So 75 and 50 mil overall. Um, it's going to have some holes in the corners, which we're going to use some screws to close our box with. So the hole centers will be the same. Um, and generally there are a lot of similarities, which you will see. Now, at this stage in the tutorials, your skills should be well developed. And you should be a bit more confident in building this model from scratch. So I'm going to go a little bit quicker through this tutorial. So please stop and go back or take your time if you need, but this should be a bit faster. I will introduce you to a few new tools as well, so watch closely and have a practice. Let's go. Inventor, new part, standard millimeters create. So let's start by creating a sketch on this plane of our main dimensions. So with the rectangle tool, I encourage you to often use this two point center tool. This is a good way to make sure that your rectangle is in the middle of your planes. Makes your life easier. I'll show you why as we go. To mention this, so 75 wide by 50 mil in this direction. Finish and extrude and we're going 10 millimeters. Now one thing I've missed, really important, every time you start a new file, save your work. Let's call this tutorial 5 lid. Now, like I showed you in the last tutorial, the next step is adding some fillets. So let's go 4 mil same as the last tutorial and we're going to do the outside corners plus the top should be eight sides eight corners sorry and complete looking good let's use the shell tool and we're going to cut this out two millimeters thick not sure if i've let you know this on previous tutorials, but on the drawing here, in this section view, which cuts through the middle of the part, this dimension here, 2, THK means thick, and TYP means typical. So typical, when you see that, means it's in more than one place. It's a common size. So this part is typically 2 millimeters thick which the shell tool achieves. Okay, next we're going to build the little pads in the corner and these are slightly bigger than the last tutorial. So let's start with a sketch and we can draw these in the corner. Now I'm doing this a little differently this time. I'm going to show you another way we can do this quite quickly. Let's draw a rectangle over on the side here. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to constrain this rectangle in the corner here. So I'm going to make, I'm going to choose this geometric constraint called collinear. I'm going to make this line and this line collinear on the same line. And this line and this line collinear. Just right click and escape. And you can see that those two lines are now fixed on those faces. Put in dimension, and I'm going to make this one 5.5. And the other one's the same, so I'm going to use the equal tool and make this one and this one the same. Right click and escape. Quick way to do that bit in the corner. Now, I want to use the mirror tool in the sketch. I generally like to do mirrors in as a solid geometry, in other words, in the main part of the program, but today I'm going to show you how to do this and use this tool in the sketch. 
So first I need to create some lines. So I can do that from the center point. Create a vertical line. Escape and then create a horizontal line. The reason I build these lines is I'm going to use these to mirror my geometry. So mirror tool. Choose my geometry. So I want to choose these four lines here. And my mirror line is going to be that line to start with. Apply. And I can go again now. So I can now choose more geometry. So I need to go over this side. I can choose these four again. And also that one, that one. I want these four here. So bang, 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 bang. Mirror line, choose that, and it's going to be this line, and apply. Done. So very quickly, I've built those four. Now I can go finish. Extrude. Choose those four profiles. you note they're a rectangle, and they actually overlap the solid slightly in the corner here, but that doesn't really matter because it's going to disappear when I extrude it into the part. So let's change the direction here and go to next, which means it will stop at the next face. Go OK. Whoop, I've made a mistake. I have cut rather than extruded. So right click and edit feature. And what I did do wrong there is Make it cut rather than join. Okay, done. Getting there. Okay, next step on my drawing is I'm going to add my holes in. Now, I'm going to hit you with a bit of engineering on this. So, follow closely. These four holes have the same spacing and position as the last drawing. I've just noticed I've made a mistake on this one, which I'll fix for you. Um, but I didn't put the hole centers, so I'm going to remember these from the last model on tutorial 4. Now, for this tutorial, when we build this box, we're going to use some screws to hold our box together. Now, the, the screws that I've decided to use are what we call M3, or metric 3mm screws. That means that the diameter of the thread is going to be 3mm in diameter. Now there are some standards that exist about the holes so the idea is that we want this screw to drop through this cover or this lid and it's going to screw itself into the box. So the hole that we want in the lid is what we call a clearance hole which means that the screw should be able to just drop and clear its way through. You don't want to be screwing with the screwdriver your screw through the lid. You only want to fix the lid to the bottom. So the screw should just drop gently inside. As you can see in this dimension that for a clearance hole, the diameter of this hole is 3.4, but the screw is 3, which means that it's going to be some clearance. So the thing should be a little bit loose. The other thing to note here, engineering wise, is that this angle on the lead-in of the hole is what we call a countersink. So this means that we need to use a countersink screw as our screw to fix our lid to our box. If you don't know what a countersink screw is, do not worry. Either Google it or ask Mr. Fitz or your teacher and we can give you an example of a countersink screw. Very commonly used in woodwork and construction. All right, let's go. Let's create these holes. So I'm going to show you quickly how to use the hole tool in CAD. We haven't used this before, and I don't use this a lot unless I'm doing specific holes such as these where I need to use a standard. So before I begin this hole, I'm going to create a sketch on this top face, which you'll see in a minute why I do this. So sketch on the top face. I'm going to draw a center rectangle. Again, these are very useful. And I'm just going to make this nice and big out here. 
Now, I've made it big just to give me some space. Now let's dimension it. So this is going to be 67 by 42. Now that is a quick way of building those hole centers for our clearance holes. Finish the sketch. Let's go to the hole tool. Now this is a very useful tool. Um, but again, I, if I'm doing a basic hole, I don't use this a lot. I use this mainly for doing holes that are relating to screws or bolts. Now let me show you how to use this. A lot of different options here. So let's go placement. I want to go from sketch. This means that it's going to use a sketch which I've built, which I've just built, to position my holes. So I can click on the corners of my sketch and that'll use those corner points as my placement for my holes. You can see already it's trying to give me a bit of a preview. Now I've got four different hole options here. You can hover on these and it will tell you what they are. I won't give you that much detail, I'll let you discover these. But the one that we want is a countersink. You can see the shape of it. it gives you a bit of a hint as to what it is. So countersink and what else have we got? Down here, we can do a simple hole where it will take these dimensions that are by default. I can also do a clearance hole, which is what we want to do per my drawing. Click on clearance hole. Now, all of a sudden pops up all of this information. Now, this is a good thing to learn when it comes to understanding types of threads and screws. So here is the fastener type. A fastener is another name for a screw or a bolt. And the standard we want to use is ANSI metric M profile. So metric is the system we use in Australia. Fastener type, don't worry about this. This the default's fine. The size is an M3, so check for the drawing, but M3 is what we want to use. Now, the beauty of this in the program is that all of the information regarding the hole diameter, the countersink angle, and the countersink diameter all comes from this particular standard. So you don't have to actually know what these are, but these are standardized, which means that these come from a table and they are commonly used across countries. So that's all the information you need to know. Once that's already there, you can see your preview. It's going to cut the countersink. Just also make sure that the termination is through all. That means that the hole will go through everything. Sometimes you can put in a distance if the hole is going to stop or go to a face. But in this case, we want to go through all. That looks good. And go OK. Almost there. There are some fillets to add, so check the drawing, but I know that we need a 2mm fillet, and we're going to need that here, here, and here. So get that happening. All corners. Go okay. Save your work as you go. And that's almost there. There's one more fillet to add, which is in these corners. Now this is a 0.5 mil fillet. Check the drawing. That's on these. And okay. And the very last thing to do to finish this off is to make this box yours. So we can chuck some text on here, which as you see on the drawing, it says your name here. So we create a sketch, choose your face, and we can add some text. So click your text, should bring up the dialog box. Now from memory, I think my text was three millimeters high. Font style, make it whatever you want. I like to use 